Let the bass kick. I can speak for all of us in the entertainment business who are attending here tonight because of a common emotion, fear. I'm talking fear. That is the way I feel about Lou Wasserman. The Last Mogul. Think Film presents a Barry Averidge film. Did you feel any pressure when you were researching the film and digging these things up to, to not make the film? I mean, because there's certain people in Hollywood that don't necessarily want that side of this story told still. The difficulty in making the film was once we arrived in L.A. to make the film. It was difficult. You hate to sound sensationalist, but, you know, we were followed. We did have to move the film stock to another room under in our hotel to, you know, under a different name uh, and whatnot. And we were very, very aware of the presence of, of people that weren't interested in the film being made. Phone calls from, you know, lawyers that didn't identify themselves saying that we were going to be sued and strange faxes and whatnot, but, you know, uh, it, we finished the film. He was a very gentle guy, unless you uh, disagreed with him or crossed him. For decades, Lou Wasserman was called the most powerful man in Hollywood. I believe the only orgasm Lou Wasserman ever had was at the opening of Jaws. Lou Wasserman has a huge, is a huge part of Jaws becoming sort of the first blockbuster ever. Blockbuster when we ever. first previewed Jaws, we went away from salt water in Dallas, Texas. In those days, we just said Big Fish Story on the, on the Marquee studio preview, and we got everybody, and we all went to the hotel and looked at the cards. They had cards for the audience, and I remember one card which said, this is a great movie, now don't f*** it up. <laughs> and, um, anyway, the next preview was in Long Beach, California, and that's the one Lou Wasserman attended. And he called quickly uh, summoned High Martin, who was the head of distribution, and reduced the number of uh, situations to 300. And I remember him saying, the reason I'm doing this is if someone in Palm Springs wants to see this movie, I want them to come to Los Angeles to see it. I don't want it to be playing in Palm Springs day and date. And so it was lines were all over the country and all over the world for that. For more than half a century, one man was the undisputed king of Hollywood. If Hollywood is not Olympus, Lou Wasserman is Zeus. We knew that we had to, you know, the, shoot the Black Tower and have that shot uh, based on the way we were shooting it. There was plenty of archival footage, but nothing that would be as pure and crisp. And, and again, Universal wasn't cooperating, so we, we just basically booked a group tour and, and said that we were... Uh, filming some, you know, just some general footage on, on Hollywood. It was like, you know, for some channel back in Canada, so who cares? And they were like, that's true, we don't care, so come on board. And then, and, and we got on the trolley that, you know, that Lou invented pretty much and said, look, we just want to let you know everything's great, but stay away from the Black Tower and you cannot film Lou Wasserman's name and you cannot go near the commissary. It was like, like they knew. And uh, our camera crew, uh, had suddenly developed a, a stomach a problem and stayed back to film Black, the Black Tower, uh, at which they got caught by a whole security team, and then you know, and then they uh, threatened to throw us out if we did that again. You got on the lot much the same way that Steven Spielberg got on the lot by sneaking on the lot. <laughs> That's how he started his may career. May I have? May I have a tenth of that success <laughs> by sneaking on the lot?